welcome back to the NaNoWriMo YouTube channel. My name is Sierra, I'm a writer, editor, and your illustrious YouTube guide for today's video on world building. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the concept of world building? Well, as a fantasy writer myself, I have a little secret to share with you. World building doesn't have to be as complicated as it's made out to be. In this video, I will give you five concrete steps on how you can start building a strong, layered, and interesting fantasy world without any prep. Number one, plot is the point. When it comes to good storytelling, you only really need to share the world building details that enhance the plot. We all live on Earth, but do you know every single language? Do you know all the customs and cultures of everyone on Earth? No, unless you're an oracle, in which case comment down below because I have some questions. If you don't know all the details of the world you live in now, then you certainly don't need to know all of the details of the world you are creating. There are many different species in my fantasy novel, but I only know a lot about those that factor heavily into the story. And even then, I only know all the details that pertain particularly to the plot. You don't need to know the vast history of a character that is only mentioned in passing. So when you're writing, ask yourself this, is this detail necessary to further the story or enhance character development? It's obviously okay to include some frivolous details now and then, but just remember that the main point of your novel is the plot and your character development. Number two, listen to your characters. When I was writing the first draft of my fantasy novel, I knew practically nothing about the world I was stepping into. I learned everything through my characters and their experiences. I discovered new races and new cultures as new characters came into view. I learned about past injustices and character histories as those characters started to share their stories. I explored new landscapes as my characters continued on their journey. So when a new character comes into your story, whether you planned for them or they came in unannounced, consider what their appearance, attitude, language, or bearing can show you about your world. You don't have to share everything with the reader, remember, focus on what enhances the plot, but knowing these details can help you develop your own understanding of your fantasy world. Number three, you don't have to be a linguist. Not every human on Earth speaks the same language, so the same should be true of your fantasy story. But that does not mean you need to be Tolkien. A great way to show language diversity without creating a whole new language is by describing what the language sounds like, not necessarily what's being said. For example, he spoke to her in a tongue she did not understand. It was rough and guttural, as though he were pulling the words from the depths of his throat. Think of this as a play on the old show-don't-tell rule. You can show how your language sounds without telling your audience what exactly is being said. You can also give qualifiers like she said in her native tongue or she said switching to the common tongue. Additionally, you can include a few words here and there from one of your fantasy languages without actually fleshing out an entire language. Many authors will do this to add a sense of reality to their fantasy work. But don't spend too much time worrying about grammar or anything like that. You do not have to craft the language. You can just come up with a couple of words here and there and pepper them in through their speech. Number four, skip the exposition. When we meet new people, we don't tend to spill our entire life stories, unless that's your thing. This should be true for your characters as well. When introducing a new being or species, don't overload the reader with too many details. Let them discover the culture of your character as the plot moves forward. This can look something like your group of characters all sit down for a meal, but character A isn't eating anything because there's only meat on the table and it turns out they're vegetarian. These kinds of natural details help to enhance the world of your fantasy novel without requiring long info dumps or expository dialogue. This also means that you don't necessarily need to know all of the details except for the ones presented in that exact moment. Five, don't box yourself in. If you spend all your time crafting every minute detail of your fantasy world, you will feel pressure to include all of that in your story. Why wouldn't you? You just spent weeks, months, maybe years crafting this very detailed world, figuring out all of the history and languages and timelines, and then you use like 5% of it in your story? No! If you spend ages on world building, you run the risk of stifling your creativity and forcing your narrative into this tight box that you created. All you need is to listen to yourself and your story. Bonus tip number six, wait until the next draft. I firmly believe that any major world building can wait until the second, third, fourth draft. The first draft is about finding your story, getting to know your characters, following them along their journey. Once you have that down, then you can do the work of getting in those little details that help enhance your fantasy world. See what your mind comes up with during that first draft, and then you can fill in any holes in later drafts. Whether you're a pantser or a planner, creating a fantasy world can be daunting, but it should also be 
fun. So if you don't know all the details, that's okay. You don't need them to get started. Trust yourself as a storyteller to figure it out as you go along. And remember, I'm always rooting for you and so is everyone at NaNoWriMo. Check out the NaNoWriMo website at the link below for tools and help getting started on your next project. Thank you for watching and happy writing. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!